Boilerplate clauses are standard clauses which appear in contracts over and over again in the same or a very similar form. They are normally included at the end of the contract, after the operative provisions. Let me give you a few examples of boilerplate clauses, entire agreement, severability, force majeure, assignment, counterparts, governing law and jurisdiction, arbitration, notices, amendments, term and termination. Boilerplate clauses were given that name because they are rather solid and stable like letters on metal plates used on boilers or for printing. These are exactly the two theories about the origin of the name, boilerplate clauses. According to the first theory, the name was adopted because of the boilerplate clause's similarity to steel plates affixed to boilers. You know what I mean, the big vessels for boiling water. The steel plate had on it letters specifying the producer and some other details. And as you can imagine, firstly, it would be very hard to change such letters, and secondly, the plate of a given producer was attached in exactly the same form to one boiler after another. The second theory is that the name boilerplate is an analogy to a metal plate used in the past for printing newspapers, especially the ones used to reproduce a text that was inserted repeatedly, in many editions in the same form. You can imagine that once you created a metal plate for reproducing a text, it could not be edited. Modern boilerplate clauses have some variations, but the core of each such clause is practically unchangeable. In this video, we'll discuss in more detail two boilerplate clauses, the severability clause and the entire agreement clause. What is interesting about the entire agreement clause is that it is known under as many as five different names, entire agreement, entire contract, merger, integration, parole evidence. Nevertheless, the core of the clause, no matter the name, is almost always the same. And it normally uses the word, supersedes, which means, replaces. What replaces what? You will find out once we look at the wording of that clause. The entire agreement clause may read as follows, this agreement constitutes the entire agreement between the parties, relating to its subject matter, and supersedes all prior agreements, understandings, negotiations, arrangements, commitments, representations, correspondence, either oral or written, of the parties with respect to the subject matter hereof. So you see that with such a clause the current agreement replaces everything that the parties have previously arranged and discussed in respect of a given subject matter. That's why it can be also called merger clause or integration clause. Put simply, all prior negotiations and arrangements between the parties are merged or integrated into this agreement. Why parole evidence? Parole evidence is the evidence of oral discussions, negotiations, statements, and this clause intends to fully eliminate its admissibility. Let's now concentrate on another typical boilerplate clause, the severability clause. It may read as follows, if any provision of this agreement is or becomes invalid or unenforceable. Such invalidity or unenforceability shall not affect the remaining provisions of this agreement which shall remain in full force and effect. The name of the clause is severability. Because an invalid or unenforceable provision can be severed, that is cut out, and this does not affect the rest of the agreement. The clause may additionally include a stipulation that the parties shall negotiate in good faith, a valid and enforceable replacement for such clause. This brings me to the end of my speech. Thank you for your attention.